Things are a little unsteady this morning. I asked the Holy Spirit to come and fill this place, but I, I didn't mean that the church should catch on fire, literally. <laughs> so, <laughs> please, <laughs> keep an eye on those candles. <laughs> Walk that way. Walk, well, yes. Okay, Lord. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. I greet you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. We're going to warm up with, it is the cry of my heart, and it is 2165, not 63, in the faith we sing. Creator God, sustainer and nurturer of all life, you formed us and all the world. We praise you because you are fearful and wonderful. You know us so well. Nothing about us is hidden from you. Search us and know our hearts. Test us and know our thoughts. Protect us from all wickedness. Amen. Before we hear the reading from Acts this morning, I want to remind you that last Sunday, the reading from chapter 6 in Acts described how a group of seven men, including Stephen, were chosen from among the early Christians to care for the Greek-speaking widows. These men were chosen because they were known to be full of the Spirit 
and full of wisdom. So between that reading and today's reading, it says that Stephen was full of God's grace and power and performed great wonders and signs among the people. But some people from the synagogue argued with him and arranged to have him arrested and brought before the Sanhedrin. Let us pray. Holy God, as the scriptures are read, open our hearts to hear the message that you have for us today and guide our thoughts according to your will. Amen. verses 55 through 60. This passage is about Stephen, an apostle who was filled with the Holy Spirit and did many wonders. He has been arrested and brought before the council. But filled with the Holy Spirit, he gazed into the heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see the heavens have opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they covered their ears, and with a loud shout, all rushed together against him. They dragged him out of the city and began to stone him, and the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning Stephen, he prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. And when he said this, he had died. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Thank you. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 139. You can remain seated for the psalm. We'll read it responsively. Page 854. And we'll be reading just verses 1 through 12. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O Lord, you know it all together. You pursue me behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is I, I cannot attain it. Whither shall I go from your spirit? Or whither shall I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the seas, even there your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me. If I say, let only darkness cover me, and the light about me be night, even the dark is not dark for you. The night is bright as the day. The dark is the light of you. Amen. Our gospel lesson this morning comes to us from the Gospel of Matthew. Please stand as you're able. Matthew 13, verses 24 through 30 and 36 through 43. Jesus put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. But while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. The slaves said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, No. 
For in gathering the weeds, you would uproot, uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time, I will tell the reapers, collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. Then Jesus left the crowds and went into the house. And his disciples approached him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. He answered, The one who sows the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world. And the good seed are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one. And the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all evildoers. And they will throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Let anyone with ears listen. The word of God for all to hear. Thanks be to God. Our gospel lesson this morning is called The Parable of the Wheat and the Weeds in many Bibles. It's worth noting, however, that the word translated weeds, zizania in the Greek, refers to a specific weed that looks like wheat and makes you sick if you eat the grains. Once it has matured, it's possible to tell zizania from wheat, but not at first. This parable that says that the kingdom of God is like a field full of wheat and look-alike weeds growing side by side says that we can't pluck out the weeds because they look so much like the wheat that we can't tell them apart. We also heard about Stephen in the reading from Acts. Stephen was a faithful disciple. He was wheat, full of the Holy Spirit. But he was mistaken for a weed, a blasphemer who spoke against God by the religious leaders. Let's consider the gospel first. When the disciples were alone with Jesus, they asked him to explain the parable of the weeds in the field. And so Jesus says that the kingdom of God is like wheat and false wheat, side by side. You can't tell the difference between them. They grow side by side and look pretty much the same. The one who sows the good seed is Jesus. The field is the world, and the good seed are the children of the kingdom, God's children. The weeds look like children of God at first, but once they have matured, you can tell by what they produce whether they're truly children of God or not. The harvest is the end of the age. And the reapers are angels. <coughs> you okay? <coughs> the harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Angels will collect all causes of sin 
and those who practice lawlessness. And like weeds, they will be burned. A lot of people <coughs> spend a lot of time trying to figure out <coughs> who will go into the fiery furnace and who is going to shine like the sun. In our reading from Acts chapter 7, we heard about the stoning of Stephen. Stephen was full of grace and power and performed great wonders and signs among the people. He was a child of God. But some people from the synagogue argued with Stephen. They couldn't stand up against the wisdom of the spirit given to him. They couldn't stand up to his wisdom, but they still thought he was wrong, that he was a weed. So they secretly persuaded men to lie and say that he had heard, say that they had heard Stephen speak blasphemous words against Moses and against God. They stirred the people up, and the elders and the teachers of the law seized Stephen and brought him before the Sanhedrin. They produced false witnesses who testified against him. Doesn't that sound familiar? Mm -hmm. The same thing was done to Jesus and John the Baptist, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel. The face of Stephen was like the face of an angel. He explained that what they were doing had been done to the prophets for ages. But they were convinced that Stephen was evil, a weed that needed to be plucked up. And they stoned him and killed him. People don't seem to be very good at discerning who is good and who is evil, do they? Often we think that people who agree with us are good. And people who disagree with us are evil. Many people, especially those in power, those in charge, like the way things are being done they like the status quo, and they don't want things to change. They're comfortable and convince themselves that the ones trying to change things, people like Jesus and Stephen, are wrong. Isaiah and all the prophets warned people that they were not following God. Instead of listening and changing, they killed him. John the Baptist cried, repent. Pharaoh killed him. Jesus tried to change the way people live, to get them to put love first. Hmm. They killed him. Stephen tried to teach people about Jesus. They killed him too. Do you see a pattern? So when someone tries to tell you that changes that are happening in the way that people worship or the way people live or love and it's the work of the devil, don't be so sure. We are not very good at picking out the weeds in the field of wheat. Remember, God is always bringing change. Life is change. And you, like everybody else, are probably not that good at judging who is righteous. But that's okay, because it's not your job. It's not my job. 
It's the job of God and angels. And I can tell you that I am not an angel. Ask my mother. <laughs> Instead of trying to figure out who is wheat and who is weed, we need to work on our own faith. Make this time, this sacred time during worship, as free as possible from distractions. As free as possible from annoyances and inconveniences. Worship God with all your heart and ask for wisdom. Do something extra to strengthen our community. If you're supposed to read the scripture, practice beforehand so that people can tell that you care and that you prepared. Do an excellent job for God. Worship God and pray during the week. The Didache, one of the earliest manuals for Christian living, says pray the Lord's Prayer three times a day, every day, morning, midday, and evening. That might not, might not feel right to you, but you can deepen your practice of personal devotions by turning to God more often, doing something extra. Talk to God constantly <coughs> about everything. Thank God when you wake up in the morning, feeling God's presence, seeking God's guidance. And if you find yourself wondering what you should do about sin in the world, live a life of righteousness in a public way so that those who have not yet found their way to God can see in you the power of Christ, the wisdom of the Holy Spirit, don't turn your back on sin. Overpower it with loving kindness. Counteract sin with love, not judgment. Judging is not our job. Love transforms others, even as we are being transformed through hospitality and grace not hatred and exclusion. Love heals others as we are being healed through acceptance and hope, not judgment, not condemnation, not exile. God, the Almighty King, is the judge. We are to be like Jesus, loving and healing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our response to the word this morning is, You are mine, number 2218.
song. It's a good one. <laughs> this is the time when we share our concerns and celebrations. Has anybody made it up to the Dimmick camp meeting? I haven't either. I had it on my calendar for last Sunday. And things came up and I didn't get there. But there are a few more chances if you check the back of your bulletin. The NEPA band Christmas in July is tonight at 6.30. And next Sunday, it's the airport pickers. That's Saturday. Oh, that's Saturday? Yes. Oh, that's right, the 29th. Ah, that's Saturday. Okay. I didn't notice that. Thank you, Bob. So next Saturday. All right. And then next uh, Sunday, we have a fifth Sunday service with Potluck here. Um, when we met Thursday night, several people uh, said they would bring ham, meatballs, and meat lasagna. So there's going to be plenty of food. Um, we are responsible for meat dishes. And Lemon already knows they're to bring the sides. So we'll be here at 10 next Sunday, okay? Except for PPRC, which has the joy of coming early at 9 o'clock. <laughs> um, you'll also notice on your bulletin that uh, we discussed a Bible study for the fall on Thursday evening, and the details are there. And I will be leaving town Next Sunday, after worship, I will be preaching next Sunday. Um, and then we're going to the Finger Lakes to stay in a rustic cabin that does not have air conditioning. So prayers for cool nights would be appreciated. <laughs> I hear there's a lovely breeze off the lake. Fingers crossed. Does anyone have any uh, joys or concerns to share? This year? Yeah. Oh, well, good for you. And prayers for my brother Sonny, who's not doing good at all. Yeah. Uh, Sonny is quite ill. Please pray for him. Others? I don't know if any of you know Janie Crane or her family. I saw. Um, that she was a young girl who died in an ATV accident. Um, I, di I didn't know her, but it's always tragic when those things happen. So I put her on our prayer, her family on our prayer list. Michelle. I'm going to enjoy to go to a home in the state park yesterday and spend it with um, friends and family. It's beautiful, isn't it? Wonderful. It's always good to be out in God's creation. And it took a little tumble, but I, the water took a little high. So I thought maybe it would be a good idea to go on the tube. I already asked for prayers before we went, that way we'd stay safe. <laughs> and, yeah, sucked me right under. Do we get some rocks? And, but I was okay. Huh. I thank God when I came out. I'm like, thank you, God. Were you tubing? Was it on a creek? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have experienced that. That happened to us this time last year in Colorado. Yeah. So, yeah, it's pretty scary mm -hmm. when you get sucked under and bounced around. Yeah. It's kind of like life. You got back under. So yeah, it's kind of like life. <laughs> <laughs> Just we can't breathe. <laughs> oh, well, I'm glad that you're pretty much okay. A little banged up. Good thing you prayed before. Imagine if you hadn't. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Others. And the candles are still standing up straight? Okay, we're good. Perfect. All right, let's go to God.
creator God, holy gardener who sustains and nurtures all life, open us today to your life-giving grace and transformative love. As we notice our own internal struggles, empower us to greet the wheat and the weeds in our own hearts with care and compassion. As we recognize the challenges and suffering in our community, give this same gift of care and compassion to those whose names and situations we have lifted up. As we move through the world, use us to show loving kindness to all. Inspire us to meet the weeds and the wheat in our neighbors with acceptance and hope. We know, Lord, that you alone have the final say, and so we give ourselves over to you as instruments of hospitality and grace, inspired by your Holy Spirit to tend our neighbors as we are tended by you. Hear us now as we pray the prayer you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This is the time when we bring our tithes and offerings to our Lord, as is right. Sending song is I Can Hear My Savior Calling, number 338 in your red hymn.